Hi, my name is Dr. Matt Winter and I'm a urological surgeon. I am pleased to welcome you to this video discussing robotic simple prostatectomy. The aim of this video is to describe the procedure, detail the expected post-operative recovery, outline the possible complications and the follow-up that I'll be performing. The purpose of this presentation is to help you and your family better prepare for your upcoming operation. The prostate is a walnut-sized gland that sits at the base of the bladder. The urethra travels from the tip of the penis through the prostate and into the bladder. As such, the prostate is located between the bladder and penis and completely surrounds the urethra. The prostate gland is only found in males and the function of the prostate is to assist with the passage of semen to make fluid to nourish the sperm for its passage along the vaginal tract. As men age, the prostate gland can enlarge. The name given to an enlarged prostate gland is BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia. This can result in blockage of urine flow. What are the indications for surgery for BPH? It's when you failed medical management, medications are no longer controlling symptoms, urinary retention, bladder stones, urinary tract infections, blood in the urine caused by large vessels located on the prostate, or kidney dysfunction. What is a robotic simple prostatectomy? A robotic simple prostatectomy is an operation to remove the inner core of the prostate via keyhole incisions with the assistance of a robot. The operation is similar to removing the pulp of an orange while leaving the outer skin or rind intact. The pulp represents the prostate adenoma blocking the urine flow and the skin or the rind represents the prostate capsule. The operation will be performed under general anesthesia. The robot has four robotic arms, three instruments and one for a high magnification 3D camera. The instruments are seven mils wide and due to their small size, they have a greater range of motion than the human hand, which allows us to carry out the operation in three dimensions within a small space in the body. The robot does not, of course, do the operation and it cannot work or think on its own. I solely control all of its movements. After the robot arms are inside the abdomen, a small opening is made in the bladder to get access to the enlarged prostate gland. The adenoma or the pulp of the orange is then removed. The outer capsule of the prostate is preserved. The bladder opening will then be sutured closed and a catheter will be placed through the urethra into the bladder. The skin is then closed with dissolvable sutures. The catheter helps to drain urine and irrigate fluid into and out of the bladder while the prostate capsule and bladder heal. The irrigation fluid helps to stop the bleeding and prevents any blood clots from forming in the catheter. A drain tube may also be placed around the bladder closure to drain any buildup of blood or fluid. The catheter and drain tubes will be removed at a later time. Keyhole surgery is preferable to an open operation as it will assist you to recover quicker, you'll have smaller scarring and you'll be able to return to work at a shorter time duration. Your operation may need to be converted to an open operation if there's difficulty. You will spend approximately two to three nights in hospital and then you'll be discharged with the catheter in. What are the benefits of a robotic simple prostatectomy? Well, it should improve the flow of urine, relieve the symptoms of your enlarged prostate gland and relieve the strain placed on your bladder. Please judge the success of the operation at two to three months as it will take some time for the bladder to adjust. The advantages of a simple prostatectomy is that we have direct visualization of the enlarged prostate gland. It allows us to have accurate determination of the extent of the enucleation and the enlarged prostate gland so we can remove as much as possible. And we can clearly identify any bleeding points. A simple prostatectomy is the most effective and durable procedure. The efficacy remains at five years. What is the disadvantage of a robotic simple prostatectomy? Well, because we're going through the abdomen, there is a small risk of bowel injury and the other disadvantage is that we need to open the bladder to perform the operation. A robotic simple prostatectomy is generally preferred over endoscopic treatments when the prostate size is estimated to weigh greater than 100 grams or that there's a sizable bladder diverticular, when there's large bladder stones that are present that need to be removed, or when it's difficult to get access through the urethra or you've had previous trauma which makes the operation difficult. What are the risks? The general risks of surgery include anesthesia related issues your anaesthetist will discuss in greater detail, bleeding during the operation requiring a blood transfusion is rare, blood clots in the legs, deep vein thromboses, lungs, pulmonary emboli or brain stroke, heart or lung problems, for example, abnormal heart rate or rhythm, 
chest infection, collapsed lung may occur, adverse or allergic reactions to medication, damage to nearby structures, pain and scarring, and infection. The specific risks of a robotic simple prostatectomy include the urinary side effects. You may have bladder muscle weakness causing inability to pass urine. The catheter may need to be inserted again to allow the bladder time to recover. Scarring at the bladder neck, which is called bladder neck contracture. This may present as a weakening of urinary stream. This generally takes months or perhaps years to occur. If this does occur, you will require a cystoscopy and endoscopic procedure to open up the scar. Urinary incontinence is very rare. What are the sexual side effects? Retrograde ejaculation, which is when the semen goes back into the bladder on orgasm, is extremely common. This occurs in 95-100% to of patients. Erectile dysfunction is very rare. Sexual intercourse may feel different after the operation, but is generally not affected. Other side effects include catheter-related issues such as blockage, or catheter being dislodged, and bleeding. Occasional passage of blood or tiny pieces of tissue may occur for up to six to eight weeks. The exaggerated head down position during the operation may increase pressure in the chest and the eye. This often surfaces as difficulty breathing or visual side effects, which are commonly temporary. Injury to the rectum or ureters requiring additional surgery or repair of the injury is rare, but can occur in less than 1% of cases. Lymphatic fluid collection around the pelvis can occur and testicular swelling and discomfort will generally resolve with some supportive underwear and time. Gas from the operation can be trapped in the abdomen or skin and can cause mild abdominal discomfort, shoulder tip pain and reduced bowel function. In extreme cases, the gas can form an embolus which is absorbed into the vessels during the operation. This is extremely rare. Once your surgery is complete, you'll be taken to the recovery area. Although you have had minimally invasive surgery, you may still experience some mild discomfort. You will have a catheter in your bladder and patients typically have a drain in the abdomen you will have five to six small incisions where the port sites were closed with dissolvable stitches and some skin glue. You'll be giving clear fluids to drink, but it's important for you to let the staff know if you have any pain or nausea so that we can treat you appropriately. Once your condition is stable, you'll be transferred to the ward where you'll stay approximately two nights. You'll then be discharged once you're sitting out of bed, walking around and are comfortable. Please expect to have intermittent passage of red urine and small clots for the first couple of weeks after the operation. Do not be alarmed, this is very common and will settle by itself. It may take a few months or weeks for you to notice improvement in your urine flow. Please judge the success of this operation at three months. I strongly advise you to avoid straining for the first four weeks post-operation and gradually build up your activity levels. You will return to work after the first week post-operation providing you don't perform any heavy lifting. At the four to six week mark, you should be able to resume full activities, including sexual activity. We will provide education on how to flush your catheter if required. We advise a close friend or family member to be with you for the first couple of days at home until you are managing well. I will arrange any prescriptions for home, which will include pain relief and or injections to stop blood clots. What follow-up can I expect? You'll need to make an appointment with me roughly 10 days after the procedure. At the time, I'll perform a cystogram, which is a test to make sure the bladder has completely healed. If the cystogram shows no leak of contrast, the catheter will then be removed. If there is a small leak of contrast, we'll need to keep the catheter in for another week. You must notify my office or attend the nearest emergency department if you have bleeding in the urine that is getting heavier, not lighter, you develop a fever, or you have problems passing urine or worsening pain. I hope you found this video informative and I trust it has better equipped you and your family to prepare for your upcoming operation. I am available to answer any questions you may have or you can contact my office if you have any concerns. I look forward to helping you resolve your urological problems, performing the operation and caring for you during the recovery.